Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another video. So this week I wanted to make a video about healthy relationships. You know, so often on this channel we talk about all these different signs and traits and things to look out for when we are either dating or really just having any relationship with anyone, whether it's a friendship or a family member. And in this video, I want to talk about what signifies healthy relationship because I get a lot of questions from people asking me, hey, you know, I have never been in a healthy relationship and I often don't know when I am dating or starting to see someone what determines, you know, a healthy balance between two people. So in this video, I want to give you nine traits that way you can tell what a healthy relationship should look like. So like always, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Each week I post a video ranging from a ton of different topics, whether it's narcissistic abuse, emotional abuse, really learning how to love yourself and have confidence in yourself. Really the basis of this channel is learning how to be emotionally and mentally healthy. And that is a tall drink of water. So we have to make weekly videos so we can educate ourselves how to really be able to motivate ourselves, soothe ourselves, and help ourselves through difficult situations in life. So some of these traits are going to be very simple and you're gonna say absolutely, that's definitely something that's important. And a lot of them you will already have heard when you think of a healthy relationship, but I wanna go into why it's important and how it should feel and look. So the first trait is trust and we all know this. If there's no trust in a relationship, a relationship just can't even form because that is the foundation of what a healthy relationship is based on. So if we lack trust within a relationship, then we're not going to have that foundation and the relationship ultimately is going to crumble because everything underneath trust is not going to work properly or healthy if that trust has been broken. So if trust has been broken, you absolutely can rebuild that, but it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of different components that most people aren't really aware of and they don't realize that when the trust is gone, like I said, all of these other things tend to go out the window and we'll get into that later on in the video. So one of the biggest things, I mean, all of these things are extremely important, but for me, this one is, really up there, very, very up there, and it's communication. And when people often say, what determines a healthy relationship, and someone says communication, what does that really mean? Most often people think of, okay, well, if we have a healthy relationship, healthy communication between two people is us being able to talk to each other. But it goes way deeper than that. Communication, let's start with just yourself. Let's not even think of the other person because like I always say, everything in life starts with you. So if you are a healthy whole person, you know how to take care of yourself emotionally and mentally, and the other person is doing that as well, everyone is taking responsibility for their own thoughts and feelings and actions, then relationships will just be very smooth and easy. But when two people aren't doing that and they're projecting their wounds onto someone else and they're not taking responsibility for how they feel in certain situations, then that's when trouble usually arises in relationships. So communication really is about me being comfortable in my own skin to say whatever I think and whatever I feel and say it in a healthy way. So we're not being passive aggressive, we're not blaming, we're not projecting, we're not using the silent treatment. We are just telling someone verbally what we think and how we feel. And we're also not putting that on someone else. So if I'm telling you how I think and what I feel and maybe how I feel in a certain, certain situation and something that maybe you have done that maybe upset me, I'm going to also take responsibility. Even if you did something that you know, we all deem black and white something, you know, a lie, a betrayal, um, a passive aggressive behavior or whatever, right? I have to also take responsibility for how I feel regardless of what it is that you do to me. So that means that I can't lash out. That means that I have to learn how to hold on to myself. That learns that I that means that I also need to learn how to self-soothe that when someone else does something to me that hurts my feelings that I don't just become irrational and start exploding, you know, or reacting emotionally and getting really charged up. It, it means that I know how to, again, hold on to myself and be able to take a step back, take a breather, reassess the situation, soothe myself, talk to myself, um, take responsibility for my actions, and then come to the table with love and verbally communicate how I think and what I feel with you. So that's healthy communication. And healthy communication is also learning how to just sit there and listen to someone else and not listen um, waiting to respond. So 
there's a difference between listening and hearing and learning the difference between the two. So if I'm listening to you, then I'm just listening to the noise that you're making. But in my mind, I'm thinking of everything that I want to say to, you know, come back as my attack or to prove my point or to justify my behavior or, you know, that I just want to talk because I'm a narcissist and I like to hear my own self talk. So hearing someone is literally just using empathy. So if I'm using empathy and then I'm putting myself in your shoes, I'm not worrying about what I think and, and what's going on in my own head and how I feel so terrible, terrible because of something that you're saying to me, my ego is removed and I'm just a human being that's listening to another human being on how they feel. And I'm using empathy to put myself in your shoes so I can understand, even if I don't always agree, I can at least understand where you are coming from. So when we do that, then we feel more comfortable to be vulnerable with each other, to tell each other really what we're thinking and how we're feeling, because then we know that my partner is not gonna be annoyed or upset or emotionally react or you know be abusive if I have something to say and that person doesn't like it and we're able to really compromise and communicate with each other. So that is healthy communication. When you learn how to communicate in this way, then it makes the relationship easy and it allows the two of you to be open because you respect each other enough and we're going to go right into the next thing to say whatever it is that's on your mind and you're able to work through problems a lot quicker and faster. Now, I personally always used to think that respect was like the biggest thing in a relationship, and it absolutely is, but you can't have respect without healthy communication. So if I don't know how to communicate, if I don't know how to take care of myself, if I don't know how to soothe myself, take responsibility for what I think and how I feel, then I'm going to project. I'm going to react emotionally. I'm going to say things that maybe I don't mean because I'm upset and I'm not taking responsibility for what I feel and what I'm thinking right now. So when we kind of come from that space, we don't show each other respect. So when we do, when I'm a person that's self-loving and I know how to take care of my own self and I'm in this relationship with you, but regardless of what happens, I know how to tend to my own needs and wants and feelings and be able to soothe myself and I'm not putting that on you in order to, to give that to me because I know how to do it myself. So when I live in that world, it's easy for me to sit in a space for someone else. It's easy to respect someone's privacy. It's easy for me to respect someone's time. It's easy for me to listen to someone else's opinions. And even if they're different than mine, I know how to handle myself in that situation. And I don't let someone else's opinions or something that they did alter my emotional state. It doesn't mean that I don't stand up for myself, but it means that I don't allow that to affect me and I don't make someone else responsible for my happiness. So when we live in that kind of world, it's easy to respect everyone else and their opinions and their time and their space and their privacy and things like that. So for me, I always thought respect was the biggest thing. You know, if, if, if there's no respect in a relationship, then everything else is going to just wash away. And the only thing that respect has with regardless of communication is in terms of someone's values. So if you know someone's values and character are not in alignment with you, you might still respect that they're different, but you won't be able to have a harmonious relationship with that person, a healthy relationship with that person because the two of you are not on the same page. So if I'm in a relationship with someone and I don't respect who they are at their core, their character, and how they treat people and their behaviors and just maybe even the way they go about their day-to-day -day life, that relationship is not gonna ever be a healthy one because like I said, the two of you are not on the same page and there's always going to be friction and conflict in that relationship because you're trying to t sync up two people that live completely different lives, view life in completely different ways. And so that relationship can never work and you can never really respect another person deeply when you don't respect their character. The next thing is boundaries. And this is exactly what I meant when I said, you know, it doesn't matter if someone else has a different opinion or a different approach or a different view. When you're communicating, even if someone did something that was hurtful, that was wrong, you're going to take care of yourself, but you also still need to be able to verbally communicate to another person and possibly even set a boundary with another person. That, hey, when you were 15 minutes late and you continuously do that, that that's not okay. This is where we're teaching people how we want to be treated. And we're always doing that regardless of 
being in a marriage or a relationship for 30 years or if you're just starting to date someone or or just meeting you know a new friend or having an old family member that maybe you're trying to get that relationship to a healthy place as best as you can boundaries are absolutely everything and your boundaries are really your standards in life so I you need to know what your standards are in relationships and your boundaries are just your way of communicating hey this is what I'm gonna to tolerate, this is what I'm not gonna to tolerate. And how people treat you are all based on the boundaries that you set. Now, if we don't know how to emotionally take care of ourselves, if we have all of these emotional wounds going on inside of us, then even if we do set boundaries, we're not going to enforce them. And the minute an abuser or someone that's just manipulative and looking to take advantage of us starts to tiptoe on violating that boundary, we're gonna just let them do it because we come from such lack and we don't believe that we're worthy enough to stand up to ourselves because perhaps we're intimidated by someone, we fear the relationship ending, we don't think there's anyone else out there. Whatever it is that the stories you're telling yourself are that are keeping you stuck to not enforce boundaries, that's the real stuff that we have to tackle. And one of the things that I constantly am working on with clients and even with myself is the stories that we tell ourselves. So the stories that you tell yourself are always gonna keep you stuck. And when you look at your story, that's why I teach in my practice, learning how to detach from the stories, learning how to detach from your thoughts and looking at the thought and examining the thought. And when you start to examine the thought, whether it's a fear or stress or worry or anything like that, you start to realize that that thought, that fear doesn't have any power because what you're doing is you're just disassembling it so to speak and you're kind of looking at it and you're like wow that's actually not something that I really need to fear and so when you start to practice this you don't stay stuck in those fears and worries because those fears and worries are the things that are keeping you stuck in your day-to-day -day life whether that's in a relationship whether that's in a crappy job you know a terrible living situation whatever it is all of that fear and worry is what's keeping you stuck every single day so the next thing towards a healthy relationship is effort. And this is really huge. And something that, you know, we often know couples that have been together for years and years. And, you know, in the beginning of a relationship, we're smitten with each other, we're in that honeymoon phase, everything is light, we're putting in so much effort to have a great date night, to put attention towards our relationship. And of course, as life starts to happen, and we build families, and we have jobs, and we have responsibilities, life starts to get in the way, and we sometimes lose focus of what's important. And I think that that's gonna happen, that's a normal part of life, but being able to, again, communicate with each other and saying, hey, you know, we used to make effort to spend time together and now we don't do that anymore. And listening and hearing what your partner has to say and taking it in and agreeing and not getting defensive. You know, I'm working so hard and this is what's going on and just understanding that the most important thing are our relationships. You know, money and jobs, there's always gonna be stuff to do at work there's always going to be a bill that has to be paid but if tomorrow if you knew tomorrow was going to be your last day you wouldn't care about the bills and the money and all of that stuff it's just about learning how to find balance and i think finding balance is just remembering what's important at the end of the day and where do we need to put most of our attention and unfortunately we usually put most of our attention on the jobs that we have and the responsibilities that we have but i think just learning how to be a little bit more mindful and understanding that you know if you're a man and you want your woman your girlfriend your wife to be intimate with you she might need help around the house and understanding that every now and then surprising your man or your your partner with something really special that he's into or she's into then that always keeps a relationship you know I don't want to say spicy but that was like the first word that came to mind but you just want to always remember those good times when things were light and fun and not forgetting to flirt with each other and make it a point to say nice things to each other not just I love you but hey thank you thank you for your help thank you for going to work today thank you for paying these bills thank you for raising the kids thank you for everything that you do I feel like we often say I love you and it becomes something that's just very mundane and it tends to lose its meaning sometimes, but saying something like thank you or saying something like I'm so proud of you, that means so much, at least to me, but it might be worth just at least trying out. And I think effort and this next thing, which is gratefulness, 
is go hand in hand. We have to be grateful for our partner, that they're not perfect, we're not perfect, but at the end of the day, you should always be with someone who has the same heart as you. And I, that's something to me that I think is so, so important to, towards a healthy relationship is you have to love who your partner is at their core and you have to show appreciation, gratitude towards this person, maybe not every single day, all day, but often. You know, everyone wants to feel appreciated. Everyone wants to feel like what they're doing in the relationship is contributing. And even if you feel like at times your partner isn't contributing as much, whatever they can give in that moment, just being appreciative of what they can give in that day and not maybe having the bar be too high, understanding that, okay, today the bar is going to be a little bit lower and I still appreciate what you can give. That goes such a long way towards just happiness in a relationship. The next thing is your partner should love everything about you. And I think that this is really important. And I think that when you really learn how to love yourself and you love everything, the good, the bad, the stuff that you don't always love about yourself, when you love everything about yourself and you know your flaws and you know the good stuff and you accept it tried and true, that's when you will find someone that'll love you for the you that you love. And I think that that's absolutely important is that someone should know all the things, all the flaws that you have and love them anyways, and that they're not deal breakers and that they see you sometimes in a way that you don't often see yourself. I think that that's huge, even just for friendships, you know, the people in your lives should be the people that when you don't see you, when you, when you forget when you're losing yourself sometimes, either in a stressful situation or a job, they're able to help you and pick you up. Not that it's their responsibility to do it every single time, but they should see all the things that make you who you are and love you for those things. And the last thing is, and this kind of ties in with everything that we've been talking about, healthy relationship with two people. These people know how to resolve conflict. Conflict is going to happen it is a part of life. You're not going to always agree and there are times when you're going to have to compromise either one person or the other and at the end of the day learning that what we're arguing about it's not as important as our relationship and learning when sometimes to you know put the weapons away and just compromise and communicate and respect each other and just be grateful for each other. So if we're doing all of those things day in and day out, or we're at least being mindful of them a lot of the time, then we can resolve conflict and get through those tough times together because life's going to hand you some stuff as a couple that isn't going to always be the easiest. And if we just give up on relationships, you know, a lot of the times I wonder if it's a matter of in this day and age, we're partnering up with the wrong people or if it's a matter of people just don't know how to work hard in relationships and learn what healthy relationships are. I'm starting to think more towards B because I personally think that as long as two people have the same values and you respect the person, their character, as long as you can work on yourself, in my opinion, any relationship can work and get through any difficult situation that you may face. But it just really has to do with all of these things. Are we doing all of these things? Are we taking responsibility for ourselves? Or are we putting everything on the other person and not willing to change or heal ourselves? So I hope that that helps you understand kind of what a healthy relationship should look like, what it should feel like. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I am so excited to read your comments every single day. Thank you all for your love and support. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next week.